When it comes to growing Jerusalem artichokes, it's fairly easy and it's a perennial. They come back year after year. They'll grow in very poor to moderate soil. You're just needing 120 to 150 days of warm temperatures and full sun. Well, then you get tubers like we have here. We have a, a number of different tubers and storing them, we put them in an airtight bag in the crisper of the fridge and they've done quite well over the last several months. You can also put them in a bucket and layer soil and mimicking as if they're in the ground. And we've done that and are doing that in the stairs that lead up to our attic. It's very cool in the stairs and they've kept very well. But what do you do with them? You can cut them up into thin chips and you can use them dip or just eat them like, uh, like this. They're very good for diabetics. They're low in starch and you don't have to cook them to eat them. But if you do cook them, that opens up a whole new opportunity of dishes that you can prepare with the Jerusalem artichoke or the sunchoke. One thing that we are, are looking at, have not practiced yet, is fermentation with these. You put them in a brine in a jar and you let them ferment. Other things you can do with them is, based on the size, it really determines the time of cooking. You can throw these in your crock pot or in a roast that you're going to put in the oven for three or four hours with uh, vegetable broth or chicken broth or beef broth and they become very, uh, very uh, soft, almost like a mashed potato that's not been mashed yet. Very earthy and very buttery taste and they're very delicious. You can also, what we're going to do is create Jerusalem artichoke hash browns. It's the same procedure that you would follow when doing it with uh, a mashed potato or a potato uh, by grinding them up. Now you can also make these into mashed potatoes too, or mashed Jerusalem artichokes, and you can also do a 50-50 ratio with potatoes that you have harvested. Now getting back to the hash brown pro portion of this, you want to be able to grind them up. Now if you have a box grinder, that's fine. This does take some time. So what we've got is, uh, I'm not really sure the technical term for it, but it's an electric box grinder essentially is what it is. We picked this up at a yard sale a couple years ago for about $10. So what we're going to do is, and you can see I just cut this a few minutes ago and it's already starting to get brown. They do oxidize, oxidize very quickly, so you don't want to do a mass quantity of these and then wait a long period of time. So what we're going to do is we're going to grind some of these up and then prepare what would be uh, hash browns. Now they are, you know, there's a lot of water in it, just like the potato is. Let me do one more of these. Okay, now that you've got the artichoke shred and that's what you need to do. Now we're going to, the way we prepare hash browns is we put them on a non-stick skillet or a pan. We don't deep fry them because we find that that's just not the healthiest way. Now there's a lot of moisture in these, so they're not going to fry up the way you would want them to. So what we recommend is taking a clean cloth here uh, or, a, or a tea towel, put them in the center here. And what we're doing here is going to get the excess moisture out of these so they better they pan fry better. So it's really simple. And we'll just start squeezing the liquid out of it. Now you're going to see that it's going to be a brown almost uh, in some cases as it oxidizes black liquid. It is edible. It's really to your taste if you uh, want to pour it down the drain or in the compost pile or consume it. But just keep in mind if you drink this it's the same as eating one of these so essentially you're just drinking the juice of the Jerusalem artichoke. Now when you can't squeeze any more liquid out of it, that's the time you are, you want to take and throw this on your skillet or in your pan and you can fry this up to whatever you want to, or to whatever doneness you want. Now you could literally eat these just like this. When you do pan fry it, you want to season it to, what, to, to your taste. Uh, we add a little salt and a little fresh ground pepper. One thing I will caution you is, you don't want to make a whole bunch of this put in a Ziploc bag, put it in the freezer. They don't keep very well. They, they, when, whenever we put it, whenever we tried that and pulled them out and thawed them, they became very uh, rich in flavor and they were not very appetizing 
once we cook them. So uh, Drew's and Artichoke hash browns make it when you're going to need uh, when you're going to fry them up. And it's a great way to utilize a root vegetable that is a perennial that will come back year after year, whether in the container or traditional ground garden or raised beds. So four things you can do with them. Hash browns, mashed potatoes, roasting them, eating them raw. And then if you want to, you can play around with the fermentation of the Jerusalem artichoke or the sunchoke. For more information, please visit thewisconsinvegetablegardener.com.